Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds. Happy FRQ Friday. In today's video, we're gonna be going through our second FRQ Friday practice FRQ. Now, if you're new to the series or the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out the video for FRQ Friday number one, where we go over the prompt that we'll be scoring in today's video. Now in our second FRQ Friday prompt here, even more Ape Scholars submitted FRQs than last week, which is awesome to see. Shout out to Aiden and Camila once again for submitting practice FRQs two weeks in a row now, along with Emma, Jason, Madison, Prisha, and four anonymous Ape Scholars. Now the sample FRQ that we'll be scoring Scoring today is from Madison. So thank you, Madison. We appreciate you submitting your FRQ and allowing us to learn from it. As usual, the scoring guide for today's practice FRQ is down in the video description below, or you can just follow along on screen if that's easier for you. Remember that as we score each part of Madison's answer, we're gonna ask ourselves which possible rubric points she might be earning. And once we've decided which rubric part she might be earning, then we're gonna to have to decide whether or not she has enough of the correct answer components in order to earn that point. So in part A, Madison needs to describe two characteristics shared by ecosystems that have high biodiversity. Now, because she says that high biodiversity ecosystems have high biodiversity populations, she's not quite specific enough to earn the genetic diversity point. She would have needed to specify that these populations have high genetic diversity, which is more precise. And she's on the right track for the complex food web point, but again, is a little imprecise in stating that they compete within themselves. See, the problem here is that food webs, by definition, are made up of numerous food chains, which already implies that there's at least some degree of internal competition. So competing within themselves isn't quite specific enough to convince a reader that she truly understands that complex food webs are characteristic of high biodiversity ecosystems. Now in part B, we have a lot to watch out for here because this is a four point answer. Two points for identifying two human activities, and to additional points for explaining how each activity lowers biodiversity. And Madison starts off strong here, earning two identification points, one for overfishing and a second for deforestation. Now we have to see if she earns either of the explanation points for these answers. For overfishing, she states that this can cause a population crash and that it leads to not enough fish left to repopulate certain species. Now this is a great explanation that's going to earn a point. And what makes it a really strong answer is that she connects overfishing to specifically lowering species diversity here. As for deforestation, she stated that it destroys habitats so species cannot live there, which is a clear connection to biodiversity loss, earning her a fourth point here in part B. In part C, she needs to propose a practical strategy to reduce the loss of biodiversity that resulted from each of the human activities she identified above. For overfishing, she clearly proposes a quota or a limit on how many fish a fisherman can fish or a weight limit for companies. And as for deforestation, she earns the replanting trees point here from the rubric, which gives her two additional points in part C. Now in part D, Madison is so close to earning this wildfire point, but I erred on the side of caution in not giving her this point, and I wanna explain why. The rubric here specifies that wildfires can wipe out small populations, which inherently decreases species diversity. Since Madison just states that populations can be taken out, it doesn't fully illustrate that she's connecting this to a decrease in species or habitat diversity. Now it's possible that in 2013, the exam reader who graded Madison's response would have actually awarded this point, but when my students are right on that verge of earning or not earning a point, I almost always lean in the direction of taking that point away. And this might seem overly harsh, but I really wanna make sure that all year, my students get in the habit of including precision and including details so that they don't leave themselves a few FRQ points short of the score that they want when it comes to the exam in May. If we look at a student sample that earned this point, we can see that they really clearly linked a crown fire to annihilating and wiping out an entire forest restarting secondary succession in the area, and thus decreasing biodiversity. Notice the really clear connection back to the prompt because of this connection to the reduction of biodiversity with secondary succession beginning. And finally, in part E, Madison earns the ecosystem stability point, but the second answer she gives of survivability is too closely connected to the stability point, which we can see if we look at the rubric here. Now overall in this FRQ, Madison earned a seven out of 10, which is a phenomenal score. It puts her in great shape to potentially earn a five on that exam in May, as long as she's pairing that with similarly strong FRQs and a multiple choice score that's in the 80%. Now that we've gone over last week's FRQ scoring guide and scored Madison's sample FRQ, let's take a look ahead to this week's FRQ Friday prompt, which comes to us from the 2017 exam and focuses on both deforestation and some human population concepts from unit three. So in letter A of this FRQ, we are asked about the border between between Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which is visible using satellite images due to the severe deforestation in Haiti. Now in part one, we need to provide one reason why deforestation commonly occurs in a less developed country such as Haiti, 
Our first step here is circling provide and writing a one above it since provide is similar to an identify prompt under the new CED design. Now our target here or what comes directly after provide is a reason that deforestation commonly occurs. But it's not just why deforestation occurs anywhere. Specifically, we're talking about a less developed country such as Haiti. So we draw a box around this modifier here to make sure that our reason is specific to a less developed country. Now in part two of letter A, we're gonna circle the scribe and write a two above it. So we remember that we need two layers of detail and our two layers of detail have to be about a realistic strategy to reduce deforestation, again, specifically in a less developed country such as Haiti. Now in part B, we have a double prompt, which again, we're not gonna see in FRQs going forward, but we can just treat this like two separate individual prompts. So the first thing we'll do is circle identify and write a one above it. And what we need to identify in this first part is a change that can occur in the water quality, specifically in streams within a watershed that has been deforested. So a watershed that's been deforested is our modifier. And the thing we need to identify is a change that can occur in water quality. Now in the second part of this FRQ, we have an explain prompt. So I'm gonna circle that and write a three next to it. And what we need to explain is how deforestation can actually lead to this change. So we have to explain how the deforestation leads to the change that we identified above. Now in part C, we have an identify prompt. So I'm gonna circle that and write a one above it. And what we need to identify are two environmental benefits other than those related to water quality. So I'm gonna write other than water quality circle those so we remember those are restrictors, but these have to be environmental benefits of maintaining a forest. So there's our modifier. That is what the environmental benefits have to be related to. Now in parts D and E, we have this data table here with demographic data for Haiti from 1995 to 2015. So both D and E feature identify and discuss double prompts. So again, we're gonna treat these like two separate mini FRQs. In part D, I'm gonna circle identify and write a one above it. Then I'm gonna circle discuss and write a three above it. So the way we have to approach this is we have to identify our factor that in a less developed country would contribute significantly to a change in life expectancy similar to what occurred in Haiti from 1995 to 2015. There's a lot going on here, but at the core of this question, we have to give a factor in a less developed country. And that factor has to explain the change in life expectancy similar to what occurred in Haiti from 1995 to 2015. So let's find life expectancy on the graph, 95, 2015, and we have to explain how this change occurred. We have to identify a factor and then discuss how that factor led to the change. So make sure that you link your factor to this change in life expectancy, which is an increase in this case. In part E, we have again an identify and discuss. So I'm gonna circle the identify and write a one, circle the discuss and write a three, in this case, we need an economic or cultural factor. So we have to be clear that it's either economic or cultural in a less developed country that could contribute to a change in fertility rate similar to what occurred in Haiti from 1995 to 2015. It's almost the mirror of the question above, but now we're looking specifically at a change in fertility rate. And again, similar to what occurred in Haiti from 1995 to 2015. So let's find fertility rate. Let's look at the change from 95 to 2015 and let's make sure that our economic or cultural factor is going to account for that change and then when we explain how that factor accounts for that change. And that Ape Scholars is our third FRQ Friday prompt in the books, which is the same number of FRQs that you'll see on the exam in May. So if you've written all three FRQs so far, that's just what you'll have to do in May, except you know the whole back to back to back in 70 minutes part. So make sure that later this week when you write this practice FRQ, you set that 20 minute timer to constantly simulate the pace that you'll need on the actual exam in May. And if you wanna see your FRQ graded in next week's FRQ Friday video, just make sure to email Mail or snail mail it to me by the Wednesday after this FRQ Friday video is posted. As always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.